Hello, I'm Simon Maria Kubjena. I'm the director of Blue Noise, Blaues Rauschen, which will have its premiere in the section Generation at Berlinale this year. Thank you so much for having us. Ja, genau. <lacht> Solche Sachen halt. Ja. Zeig mal, zeig mal, was hast du so gemacht? Bei mir, was, bei mir war es hauptsächlich Briefe. Wie lange hast du geboxt? Ja, ja. Okay. Check mal. Okay. Okay. Dann bin ich erwartet. Was? Kannst du auch was? Ja. Boxen? Mutig. Zum Gewehr. Komm, ich hab Hello and welcome to the 36th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wutig and as you can see, I'm not in the studio right now. I'm at home, I'm uh, in quarantine right now. Um, but uh, don't worry, no expenses were spared. I got myself a yellow couch that is just about as beautiful as the one they have in the studio at Maya's Hotel. And today I'm here with Simon Maria Kubiena to talk about his beautiful short film, Blue Noise. Hey, Simon, pleased to have you here. Hey, Ian. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, well, Blue Noise is a short film that is very beautifully shot. And what I found as well is, is extremely efficient in, in its way it tells a story. I found that it was the story of a young man and the closeness and distance that he feels to other people. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about what your initial idea was for the film? Yeah, um, thanks um, to begin with for the nice words, makes me very happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in fact, um, in the beginning, my, my co-writer and I, we had this like silhouette of a man, of this young man who tries to find his, his place and rushes through one day and we wanted to to accompany him to be to to follow this this man and to to come to places we haven't seen before and to kind of find like to follow a character who is kind of silent and kind of slowly get what his what his problem what his need is and therefore kind of make a build a strong connection to someone that we maybe in real life don't really would i don't know um get as close as we get in this um, short film that was the heart of the story, I would say. And it was a lot about family and like we, we thought about people that kind of suppress us or bring us to suppress um, feelings, desires. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of found that um, we found out more and more about Alex by the people he interacts with. I mean, there's this, like I said, I, I found it very efficient to, to tell so many details in such a short time because we, um, we meet his girlfriend um, and that kind of interaction tells us a lot about how he feels maybe towards her or towards love and towards sexuality. And also we obviously meet his, his mentor or his teacher at, uh, um, at the craftsman workshop and his father as well. Um, and I, I found that very, very interesting that you have such a dense sort of storytelling in such a short time. Could you maybe tell us how you went about constructing that? Were there scenes in the beginning that you threw out or where did you have different kind of concepts about it? Definitely. Well, I, I have to, to tell you that this is kind of the first short film for me that was that kind of um, full with um, um, rooms with uh, characters for me that was a big challenge because um, my other short films were like very tiny with two characters or only in one, in one location like a chamber play but for this time I wanted to get out it was like COVID the first lockdown and I was stuck here at Ludwigsburg where I'm going to film school and I felt like oh my god every time I go out on the street I want to be part of the rush again yeah and I wanted to, to get this feeling. Um, so yeah, we, we started to, to build up the, the characters. Like, like I said, we had this, 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 we started with people who suppressed us. There was this dad 
he was always there. Someone we, like our Alex loves and also needs to let go because he he's bad for him because he's um, he's hurting him without knowing, obviously. And this is like a connection where he has to let go of. And also there was, um, it was very clear that we have this triangle of Alex, his mentor and the girlfriend and the mentor who is kind of this, this father figure, but also more like a, a person he, he, actually the person he maybe needs in a way, but also who is only this projection because he can't be, he can't be a lover for him or anything. He is the, the person he needs at this very moment to, to be completely vulnerable, to show mm -hmm. his inner self. And well, with the, with, with the girlfriend, with Nora, who is also working in this workshop, um, Actually, she was, um, when I started researching in the summer before, she was the main character. I wanted to tell the story of a, of a young girl in a, in, a crafts, in a craftsman world and where it is really rare to have women. And I was asking myself the question, how, what does it change in the, in the, how does the environment influence this young girl in, in her way to, to her own individuality? But um, soon we found out that it's it's more the story of this man, and it's more honest if, if I tell the story of this man who tries to follow his inner voice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but there was always this triangle, and we we tried a lot of things in the writing process of um, what we asked ourselves: what what does Alex need from those two people, and what can they, how can they make it hard for him in the beginning, and how mm -hmm. can they kind of surprise him and us? As well as the audience in the end yeah yeah Especially with her it was a lot of we tried a lot of things out but then also with the actors there came so many things like in with the casting we improvised so much i liked it a lot and so i, I learned so much in the, in the casting and on set as well about the characters what they what they want from each other especially the the connection between alex and nora like this kind of friendship but also maybe more who knows mm -hmm. Also, the the the, like the pressure from outside that there's a young man and a young girl. Of course, they have to be partners, mm -hmm. right? They have to be in a relationship. That's what society kind of projects on them, and they yes. and they they can't get out. And yes. Yeah, we wanted to. I, think that. Yeah, I think, and that that can you give us an example of of one of the scenes that that came from improvisation, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, especially the, the, the last scene between him and her um, was, there was dialogue there. They were like, with him. it's a small scene, but it's the scene of like, where everything is on stake and it's so hurtful for, especially for her. And they, they kind of find a way through, 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 um, to say, in a, on a physical um, in a physical way, without any words. In the editing, we cut out all the words, all the dialogue. And on set, I knew, I, I remember we, we shot it so many times with the dialogue because I felt like it, it has to be those lines, exactly those lines. Like, because what he was saying was, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And it was so much better when it was a way when there were two people who don't have a, don't know what to say, but some... Yeah go together it was yeah 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 cool. i think yeah i think that that the work you put into it and also the the different stages of the film translate really well into the sort of finished product um because you know you you have her as um an almost completely fleshed out character i guess that is because because you kind of started with her and it also already tells a story that you have her in that kind of male dominated environment and and that's just um that works to make the whole film very rich um and i, I was kind of asking myself like um you start with that craftsman workshop was there also an idea of you know of sort of social positioning of um where to start from is it important that that he comes from that kind of that that alex comes from a kind of background yeah, well, like I like I said before, when we had Nora as the main character in the beginning, it was always the interest there for the surrounding, how the environment um, kind of influences the, especially the young people trying to find their own voice and who they want to be and 
also what gender does for them. And then we have those environments that are very dominated. And especially I wanted to, to, to work with a very male dominated um, environment. And because I knew, I remember like how for me personally, it changes so much. Like I, I adapt to every environment I'm in. I sadly found that out and I felt like, <laughs> oh my God, I, I, I'm adapting so much. And I think people are adapting so much because they want to fit in because it's horrible to be so, to be alone, you know? Yes. And, and with, with this, this craftsman, what, what I liked, I started researching because I, Got to know a lot of people in Stuttgart who work in this craftsman world um, or like mechanics or like that. And that was completely new for me. You know, I'm in a film school, art school, did a lot of theater. And for me, I wanted to I always search for a way to build up a dialogue between two, two worlds, you could say, because there are different values. There are different goals in life as well. Yes. Yeah. And um, I wanted to, to show to show someone that, that we don't see that much often in movies and um, to get a change of perspective, I think. Because there are so many differences between the social bubbles and especially through the pandemic. I mean, everything like drifts apart more and more. Mm -hmm. And for me, the most um, beautiful thing about this movie was to work with, with people who have a completely different life than I have and to, to share and have this dialogue so that in the end the film is also this kind of change of perspective to say, okay, wow, in the craftsman world, it's really, it's, it's tough if you have like other sexual desires. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's still not easy. And, and when, I, when I pitched the, the story um, in our film school, I got a lot of um, feedback like, what is this problem? Oh my God, he doesn't know. Why can't he just like go for it? Yeah. Um, and when we were casting with our main actor in Berlin, he's a mechanic, by the way. He's not a real craftsman, but he's a mechanic. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of the same atmosphere, like coming out of a world that is there's kind of the same very male dominated atmosphere. And while we were talking, you know, he was 18, 19. And um, like he told me all this, 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 um, like the, the, the borders that they, there are for him also with the acting what um, yeah. what he can do and what he won't do because it's not that easy for him and, and um, yeah when he's going back to his job yeah yeah and I found that 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 is um, that you know the, the, the craftsman workshop you have those two kind of aspects to it at first is it's is very male dominated it's kind of you have this this introductory scene where um alex interacts with his friends and also with his with his girlfriend and it seems you know it's, it's friendly but it's also a little bit um there's some threatening atmosphere there as well yeah. And at the same time, you have that background of, you know, of craftsmanship, of working with your hands, which kind of flows into, um, into scenes where there's a lot of tenderness, you know, like especially the, the scene between Alex and his mentor. Um, could, you, could you maybe tell us in your own words what, what that kind of scene meant for the narrative or actually what it, what it kind of means to you in regards to the character? You mean the the like the climax of the of the movie? You mean that, so, that, that moment? sort of yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Well, of course, like what you what you just mentioned was the the contrast we built up through the through the whole movie, and I I I was searching for that the whole time to to have like this this rough and also very like the typical male um, way of, of of behaving, like he does in the beginning as well, but. On the same side, on the same, um, in the same moment, to like kind of break through, like he is, he's when he has this, when he has this, this, um, this accident um, with on work, he he's um, and the, the mentor comes to him and wants to help. He like pushes him away, mm -hmm. and I think this is something that a lot of people do with 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 words, like he does with action, like pushing away because he, he doesn't want to be cared. It's it's mm -hmm. he can't and. What I wanted to, to, or what we wanted to, to find out was a moment of like let go, 
completely let go. He's our Alex is in this moment so there is everything is out. He's he's crying or he's not crying. There's water in his eyes. He doesn't see, yeah. and it's kind of wash. It's it's a washing, you know. It's he, he washes in a way himself. And the moment um, his mentor is is there for him, he kind of that's the moment where he crosses the, the the boundary of also of society. I have to say because what he does is mm-hmm. a, is a is a mistake because you like from a professional perspective. He's not supposed to to hug his his teacher. We are not yeah. supposed to hug our teachers, but it's the thing that he wants and he needs. This yes. yeah. Yeah. And we wanted to 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 build make a focus on that. That they, those people they they act out of out of an extremely need, and as well the, the the mentor can be there for him. And in the moment, Alex is like building up enough enough courage, and I think it's so courageous what he does. Um, he he kind of shows shows what what there is as well inside of him and mm-hmm. when he feels safe he kind of follows it and and for a moment we glimpse that there is there's also the the want for 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 physical sexual closeness with men maybe maybe the, i mean this is it's a it's a short film and what's so wonderful about short films is that they don't have to tell everything yes yeah. they can make like questions and i think it's it's a question of, of, for Alex, it's a question. He's young, you know, he kind of looks at the other guys that in the, in the, in the, in the workshop and he's interested, but he can't go after it. Yeah. yeah. Very moment, he kind of just follows this question and it gives him strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, about that, uh, I, as you said, you know, you, the beauty of the film is also that it hints at a lot of things, but kind of doesn't, you know, play it out. It is for, for us to kind of decide what is there. Um, was it important to you that there is um, a sort of uh, queer aspect to, to the film or that it is sort of hinted at in, in the scene of tenderness between Alex and his mentor? Um, or where did, you know, in between sort of um, his girlfriend as the hero, so to speak, and, and, uh, and Alex, where did that aspect come in? Well, to be completely honest, I think it was always there. I, I, I remember that in the first draft, people said, you know, it could also be a, a coming out story, you know, and I was like, but really? <laughs> you know, and I think it was... It was always, um, how to say, I think it was always there because it was, a, was, was something that I was had a lot of questions during that time when I made the movie. It was something I was thinking about and had a lot of b- big emotions with. And then we, we my co- co-writer and I, we had, we had a lot of talks about that and we, we watched a lot of movies that inspired us and they were, had always a queer, queer aspect and it's, it's, it was always also about sexuality because I mean the, the, the first steps is coming of age, finding out who you are, sexuality is such a big part of that and, and sexuality, yeah. friendship, like how to deal with your own gender and all those aspects are in this one movie and for me I, I um, I really wanted in this moment where like to shift from this, from the projection of a father, like the mentor who is a father, who is hugging as a father and to show how close um, there's also the, the, the aspect of being a partner, mm-hmm. like between the, between the generations also, that there is, is you know, we, we're humans and that there's what I said before, there's this need of, of like you also described the movie of searching closeness and sexuality is also like the want to be intimate and yes yeah so i think it was always there and at a certain po- point um we said yes of course let's make it a bit more um a bit um, sharper mm-hmm. but it's also there in the beginning because it's so much about masculinity the movie also for me about like how to to like become a man, how to behave as a man in this special environment, where also sexuality and um, queerness is is a um, not an easy topic. Yes, like I yeah. said before, yeah. it's really not easy. And when we 
when we started in the research to talk about this aspect of the film as well, we, we sense that there is a lot of, um, we really have to communicate more about that. Yeah, yeah. To bring a focus to that and um, yeah, it was a relief to start um, bringing this, this, this as a kind of a, also a, a very, very strong want in this, in this young man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I found also that, um, you know, it all kind of, the, the whole aspect of the film kind of, uh, it all ends up with a scene of, I don't know, a scene of freedom as, as, as you may want to call it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I asked myself a lot, like with this, the ending, we were, we weren't sure what to, to, in the beginning, it wasn't clear what, what kind of emotion should be in the end. And at a, a certain point, I thought about, I wanted to give, like, give hope in a way, to give a good feeling because it's, it's so, I don't know, you don't know everything in life. And you have, especially in this kind of age of 19, 18, where you were so struck, stuck in images that aren't maybe you. And mm -hmm. the moments when you have to feel, oh, that was me. Those are the best feelings because you feel like, oh, wow, I can do so much. And he follows in this moment with his mentor, his voice. And also with, with Nora, he says to her or he kind of, yeah, he says to her, hey, I, I want you still as a friend. And he opens up. He makes himself fragile. And I think we should do that more because it's, it, it gives us a very, very a feeling of being alive. And after that, he's kind of ready for for are a bit more ready, you know, for everything that's out there. And yeah. He, yeah, he just goes to the to the people and is I think more a bit more free, like you said. Yeah. I think it gives us a, a definite perspective into into uh, what has changed in him that he's ready to sort of show himself more and that he's uh, more hopeful than maybe he was in the beginning, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, but also you know this this last scene especially is also improvised. Okay. It was, it was yeah. clear, it, we we the whole movie the way we shot it was um it was very clear we want to to stick to this to the script and the, the storyline but we wanted to 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 search and to experiment on set and our DP was also very very um, joyful uh, playful with that and so we were always on very very light equipment and in the last scene was only sure that he. Like there were those those people, um, our extras, and they had a good time. And it was clear that he goes to this um, to this fountain, to this to this um, small lake. But what what like the the moment he goes to this like other group, we weren't completely sure how he interacts with them or how we will shoot it. And yeah. it was in the in one of the takes to say, okay, now let's go, just follow follow them and kind of get in touch. And our, our, our DP just followed, the whole crew followed followed him. And he, <laughs> it was the last scene we shot. It was beautiful yeah. because I felt also the journey of, of, of Nando, our actor, we spent six days with, and in the end he was, he was completely open. Yeah, and yeah. He, he, yeah, it was, it was really a touching moment. I, yeah. So that basically means that one of the core aspects of, of the story also kind of translated into the real life experience of, of yeah. shooting the movie. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, I think it's always kind of this, this magic um, that can happen on a movie. And if you build like the, the surrounding in a way that you can react to those specific moments and are able to, to play um, with everything that's there, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, the, the, also like when he comes to this, to this small lake, there are a, a lot of people rushing by, and in fact, we it wasn't planned that there that there are so many people. We had like our extras having a party, but otherwise it was like still COVID. It wasn't such a nice evening. It was not that warm, and you know there weren't so many people. And suddenly, it was very close to the opera of Stuttgart, and suddenly the gates open, and three hundred people just rush out, and we were like, oh my god. Wow. This feeling is so amazing. Let's, wow. let's shoot it. We found out when there's the when there's the ending of the of the of the opera and when we can kind of time it so that we have all the people rushing by. And that's the shot. There was only yeah. one time that they all passed. Wow. And it was yeah, it was magic in a way. Wow, yeah. Like yeah, a, you got yeah. 
really lucky. And I think that's um, that's a very beautiful ending for a film that is so much about um, sort of the, the core of, of humanity, especially when, when under pressure. Yeah, it's, it's about also there building the, the connection between where we could meet Alex. No, it was always there. We wanted to, to meet him in the supermarket at a place where we could also, we, 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 see, the, we see craftsmen, we see workers in, in the supermarket, but we don't know how, how their day kind of um, passes on. And we wanted, I wanted to like stick on his neck and then in the end be back at a place where we could meet him. And maybe we meet next time crafts, craftsmen, I don't know, people from other social bubbles who have completely different lifestyles and maybe it's, it, it helps to, to build this connection. And then especially with, with sexuality, where there's still so much um, insecureness, you know, mm -hmm. and also ignorance. Like, yeah. Like yeah. I, instead of, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Simon. That you. was yeah. a very, very beautiful short film and um, a very good talk. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the talk. Thank you.